Hello, this is part two of the CMake tutorial on how to use Qt and BTK in the same project. Uh, so we let's keep going. We left off where we had just installed BTK and Qt and everything. So let's create now our own project. I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it Qt, oh, Qt BTK project. And then I'm going to open it. Here I'm going to create three directories, forms where we will include our form files, include where we will include our header files, and then source where we will put our source files. I will also add a text file called CMake lists, where we'll specify our, our CMake list content, and we'll op I'm gonna open it with code. Uh, we'll drag it here. All right, so now I'm gonna move this here. So what we're gonna do is, um, First, we have to set the minimum version of CMake, which is required. So uh, here it is. Also, all this code that I'm writing, and uh, there's a link in the description for a GitHub repository. So if you do not want to follow along and you just want to download the project, you can do that. So we set the minimum version of CMake. I'm using 3.17, so 3.17 right here. Then I'm going to create a new project. So project, and it's going to be Qt BTK project. And then I'm also going to set the, how to include Qt into our project. So for that, I'm just going to copy from uh, my project on the side. And uh, this makes sure that it can find the, that it automatically generates the code from the form files. These are the minimum packages that we need. So we want the core, the user interface, the open yield for rendering, the widgets for our forms. And this makes sure, this helps it find the path to where Qt is installed. So it uses the environment variable that we set previously. We also are gonna do the same for Qt. So similar approach. We find the directory of BTK from the environment variable that we put and, it, and have it automatically find the package, which CMake automatically does for you. Um, and then we're going to include our code. So to include our code, we want uh, three steps. So the first three steps is we want to set uh, three variables the forms directory variable, which is the path to our forms directory, which is this right here. So this is the direct, this directory, think of this directory, becomes the value of this variable. We do the same thing for include, which is for the next folder, and then we do the same for source, which is for this name folder. So now we have all three. Then we want to include these directories into our, our um, header files so that we can find the files as part of our project. So we do that by saying include directories, and then we have the same three paths. Then we're gonna find all the files that are part of our project. And so to do that, uh, we're going to use this, which basically puts every UI file in the forms directory, every header file in the include directory, and every CPP file in the source directory in our sources variable. So this is all the files that are part of our project. And then uh, this, thing that I'm going to add next ensures that that whenever we compile our project that uh, Qt is able to automatically do the code generation for the form file. So we're telling it, hey, when you are doing the auto generation, we need you to find uh, UI files in the forms directory. So we're pasting whatever previously values it has back into it plus the forms directory, which is this one coming from this variable. And then we're gonna add the executable. So to make it work for both Windows and Linux, so we're gonna have, if I'm on Windows, I wanna have this. If I am on a Unix system, I will have this. Notice that the only difference is Win32. This just makes sure that whenever we run our project on Windows, we do not have a command line. If we remove this, you will have both the UI form popping up and you will also have a command line popping up. We don't need the command line. So I just have an if statement that says, if I'm on Windows, don't give me that. Then we're gonna uh, add the targets for the includes, which will be, uh, we will have our forms directory, our include directory, and our source directory. And the last thing is we want to link all the libraries, the Qt libraries and the BTK libraries. So we will have, uh, we will link to the OpenGL from Qt, XML, widgets, all the Qt libraries, the, the generic ones, the OpenGL libraries, and then we also have the BTK libraries. And that's it. This is how our CMake uh, file should look like. Once we have this, I'm just gonna close this. Once we have this, I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to 
minimize it. I don't need it right now. And I'm going to go to CMake. So I had CMake open. Remember we left off building B2K. So I'm going to copy my project directory from here to here. And then I'm also going to create a new folder and call it build. Just like we did with V2K. It's the same exact process. And then we're going to hit paste a slash build. configure again I'm using is the same thing as we did before Visual Studio x64 hit OK now if you're in Unix the difference here is that in Unix you do not have you don't you don't use Visual Studio so you can use directly Qt creator to open your CMake list file and it will automatically um, do this for you so notice that my BTK dir is found automatically as well as all the Qt classes is found automatically uh, I'm not going to change the install prefix. We, I'm not installing my project. I'm just running it to to code in it. So now that this is done, I'm just going to hit generate, and I'm going to hit open project. So one thing that I forgot to do when we install Qt was to also add the Qt Visual Studio tools, which are right here. I already have them installed, but I'm going to show you how to do that. It's very simple. You will go to tools, go to extensions and updates. Then in here, you will. I already have it, but for you, you will have to go online. And then you will type Qt, oh, Qt, and you will find this right here. You will install it. Uh, it's very, it's very quick. Um, it will ask you to restart Visual Studio. Once you do that, it'll install, and we'll just continue as normal. Notice uh, here that we also have the old build. We only have our project target, so I'm going to right-click on the project target, and I'm going to set it as a startup project. Also, over here, we don't have debug. We only have release. So we should put only release. With that being said, uh, now that we have that, we don't have any code. Like there's, there's nothing. So in my source, I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to call it main.cpp. And yes. And once you add a new file into your, into your directories, you have to always hit configure generate and when you go back to Visual Studio you notice it'll tell you hey there's a change you hit reload and now in your sources we have main CPP so what I want to do is I'm just I just want to start a Qt application so I'm going to include include uh, Qt widgets notice that everything that is about Qt is here Q application Right, and then I'm going to do my main int main int art c oops char art v and then I'm going to do a queue application yep. and we pass the arguments and then we hit return queue application actually app that execute. And that's it. We have a Qt application. If we run it, uh, it'll compile and it'll run. Of course, it'll it will do nothing because there is no Windows. There's nothing. So with that being said, I'm just gonna stop it because there's nothing to do. So we need a form. So in order to create uh, UI forms, you know you have to use Qt Creator. So back in over here in Qt, I'm gonna go to my programs where I install Qt. Then I'm gonna go to Tools and Qt Creator and bin and then find Qt Creator. There we go. And I'm going to run it. You can also pin that to the start bar so you don't have to find it every time. I'm going to go to File, New File. I want a Qt file. It's a UI and a header form. So I hit Select here. I want a main window. So I hit Next. And I'm going to call it, I'm just going to call it main window. Now I like things to have the name how it's supposed to be. So this will create a header file, a CPP file, and a UI file. And I want this to be stored where I have my project. So QTVTK project. And I'm just going to save it here. Select folder. Hit next. Hit finish. Now I'm going to close it. Well, I'm not going to close it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, as we said, we're going to render something. And that something that we render will be triggered based on the push of a button. So I need two things. I need a button. 
and this button is going to be called uh, uh, draw sphere. And I'm also going to change the name of the button over here on the object name. So it's going to call draw sphere button. And we need a place to render. We need an open yield widget. So I'm going to drag this here. And that's it. This is all we need. Now I want it to be um, I want it to be set up properly. So over here on my central widget, I'm going to right click and I'm going to uh, actually main window and I'm going to hit layout layout vertically. So once I click this button, and you can do all shift R. So the idea is when I hit draw sphere, a sphere will render here. Okay? So, so far, so good. Now, this is a regular open yield widget. It needs to be something that VTK knows how to use. So in order to do that, we have to promote it to one of the VTK classes. So I need you to right click, and you're going to hit promote to. And then here, this is called Q open yield widget. So what do we need? We need a Q VTK open GL widget. We're going to hit add. And, and then once we have that, we select it and we hit promote. Notice that this is now called QBTK OpenGL widget. So when, in, when it starts to generate the code, it'll look for this class, which exists because it's part of one of the VTK classes. Now that we have this, it's very simple. We just hit save. We don't need QT uh, creator no more. Actually, I, I do want to do one more thing. I'm going to call this, well, I'm just going to leave it like that, open yield widget. So now, now that you have this, we can call QT creator. And I don't need this anymore. So I'm going to go back to my project here. And once we're here, I'm going to throw my UI file into the forms folder, my CTP file into the source folder and my header file into my include folder. I will go back to CMake, hit configure, generate, reload, and now you will see that we have our main window CPP, uh, CPP file and our header file. Now on my main, what I want to do is, I want to do, okay, well I want to create um, a main window. So I'm going to have to include main window, which we just created. And then here I'm just going to say main window, main window, main window, show and we're going to run this and that's it we have a a, a open geo widget which we can draw a sphere of course it doesn't do anything because we haven't write the code to do it but we have this uh, running and going smoothly so i'm going to stop this video here on the next video, we'll add the code that handles the click of the button and renders the sphere. And I'll also uh, say a few more remarks that might be important for you uh, once you start using this, this two classes, th these two libraries together. But right here, if, you, if, if this is all you needed, this is completely functional. You're using a Qt form uh, and using VTK to handle one of its uh, rendering OpenGL widgets. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.